Arrakis! Danny Villeneuve is back at the helm of Dune Part 2, the first Dune film starring heavyweights like Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, and Zendaya was a massive hit and raked in over $400 million globally, apart from collecting six Oscars out of the 10 nominations. The sequel is getting back to big leagues like Chalamet, Miss Zendaya, Rollin, Miss Ferguson, etc., but it's also introducing some major names like Florence Pugh, Austin Butler, and Christopher Walken, among others. But there's one character who has not yet been shown in any of the trailers. I'll talk about this one at the end of the video. So let's begin, and yeah, I've divided the video into two parts, the new cast and the returning cast. Now, before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. New cast, Lydia Sidhu, Lady Margaret Fenring. Lady Margaret, set to debut in Dune Part 2 and played by Leah Sidhu, is a character Dune fans have been buzzing about. She is a key player from the Dune universe and her introduction in the sequel is much anticipated. Her role, Lady Margaret, is a mover and shaker, using her Bene Gesserit clout to shape galactic politics. She's been in Paul Atreides' corner since his younger days, warning his family about looming dangers. She was even tasked with the dicey job of seducing Bade Ratha Harkonnen, which shows that she'll do what it takes for the Bene Gesserit's plan. In Dune Part 2, Lady Margaret's storyline will definitely intertwine with Fade Rauta Harkonnen, played by Austin Butler. Her mission is to snag his genetic material to safeguard their lineage. She's also got a secret weapon up her sleeve, which is supposed to be some kind of protocol to control Fade Rauta if needed, which is a huge advantage. Besides her Fade Rauta connection, Lady Margaret plays a significant role in Paul's journey. In fact, she's the one who flags the danger to Paul and his dad, Leto, in the novel. Although this part didn't make it into the first film, her belief in Paul's survival and return becomes crucial. Her control over Fade Rauta could potentially be a game changer in Paul's feud with him. Sohela Yakub, Shishakli. Sohela Yakub is gearing up to play Shishakli, a Freeman leader, and her casting is stirring up some serious excitement. Yakub's role is a fresh twist on the character from Frank Herbert's classic Flipping the Script with a gender swap portrayal. This is similar to Sharon Duncan Brewster's role as Liet Kynes in the first film. Yakub's Shishakli is said to be a key figure in teaching Paul Atreides the art of sand writing, an important Fremen skill. In Herbert's book, Shisha Klee, originally a male character, shows Paul how to use maker hooks to ride the enormous sandworms off Arrakis. It's a crucial part of Fremen life, not just for the spectacle, but for survival, as these rides are how they travel across the vast deserts. Villa News' decision to gender swap Shisha Klee is more than just a casting choice. It's a nod to a more inclusive and progressive portrayal of the Fremen, breaking away from the book's implied gender norms, especially in sand riding. This creative choice sets Villeneuve's adaptation apart from previous ones and also enriches the Freeman backstory, suggesting that any Freeman, regardless of gender, can aspire to be a sand rider. This evolution of the Freeman becomes crucial as the story progresses into Dune Messiah, the potential third film in the trilogy, where the Freeman's transformation into religious zealots under Paul's rule is a central theme. Austin Butler, Fade Ratha Harkonnen. Austin Butler, fresh off his role as Elvis, is gearing up to play Fade Ratha Harkonnen in the upcoming Dune Part 2. This character is crucial, set to rule Arrakis and intensify the Harkonnen presence, which director Villeneuve promises to be more significant this time around. Fade Ratha, nephew to Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, played by Stellan Skarsgård, is not just some power hungry bad guy, he's deeply connected to the central plot particularly with Princess Irulan, who is part of the Bene Gesserit's long game to create a super being, the Kwisatz Haderach, which is basically the male version of the Bene Gesserit, someone who can access the memories of both males and females. But Paul is already on the way to becoming the Kwisatz Haderach, which brings Fade Rautha into a rivalry with Timothy Chalamet's character, Paul Atreides. So this fight is more than just a fight for power, it's part of a centuries-old feud. Butler's character is a direct contrast to Paul, both are the top fighters of their generations, carrying the weight of their family legacies, but while Paul struggles with leadership, Fade Rautha is eager to prove himself. This dynamic is going to be a highlight of the film, especially since Fade Rautha wasn't in the first movie. His inclusion in Dune Part 2 opens up opportunities to explore more off-world scenes and dive deeper into the universe's politics and conflicts. With Paul having survived a Harkonnen assassination attempt, the stage is set for a showdown between him and Butler's Fade Rautha. Florence Pugh, Princess Irulan Carino. 
Florence Pugh, known for her Oscar-nominated performance in Little Women and roles in Lady Macbeth and Outlaw King, is set to bring Princess Irlan Carino to life in Dune Part 2. The buzz around her joining cast started back in March 2022, and now it's official. In Frank Herbert's novel, she's a historian who provides a deeper look into the Dune universe through her writings, sprinkled throughout the book as chapter introductions. She ends up marrying Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides, but it's more of a power move than a love story, especially with Paul's heart set on Cheney, played by Zendaya. Now here's where it gets interesting. Irlan is part of the Bene Gesserit Order, a group of women with mind-blowing skills like heightened senses and mental abilities. She's got a brain that would put a supercomputer to shame and can make James Bond look like Johnny English, although she's not really up there with Bene Gesserit's best. While she might not have the voice, a key Bene Gesserit skill, who knows what twists Dune Part 2 might bring? Irulan's role as a historian is quite important, actually. She's the one documenting the epic events and her insider's perspective, thanks to her Bene Gesserit ties, adds more flavor to what we know about the universe. We might even hear her narrating parts of the movie, giving us snippets from the novel. The real drama for Irulan in Dune Part 2 is her torn loyalties. Stuck between her dad, the Emperor, and the Bene Gesserit's demands, she's in a tight spot. As the Empire's stability hangs by a thread, her role as an information source and manipulation tool for the Bene Gesserit puts her at the heart of a major power struggle. What she'll choose, family or the sisterhood, it's a tough call. But what irks me is that her main role would start after the events of Dune 2. So let's see what Mr. Villeneuve has in store for Miss Pew. Christopher Walken, Emperor Shaddam Carino IV. Christopher Walken steps into the shoes of Emperor Shaddam IV, the big bad emperor lurking behind the chaos in Frank Herbert's epic. Denny Villeneuve, who split the hefty Dune novel into two films, has cleverly kept the Emperor in the shadows until now. This move amps up the suspense and deepens the plot, setting the stage for Shaddam DeFord's grand entrance. Walken's casting as Emperor Shaddam DeFord was a tightly kept secret, sparking loads of speculation before his role was confirmed, with a career boasting unique and praiseworthy roles like the troubled Nick in The Deer Hunter and his iconic turn in Pulp Fiction. Watkins got the chops to make a memorable villain. His unique style and intensity are tailor-made for the Emperor, who despite possibly limited screen time, needs to pack a punch. In the Dune Saga, Shaddam IV, the last of the Padishai Emperors, is the guy pulling the strings. He's scared stiff of Leto Atreides' growing influence and charisma, fearing he might get booted off the throne. Though he sets up the Harkonnens to knock off House Atreides, but it's his move that ends up fueling Paul Atreides' vendetta. While Baron Harkonnen is the face of evil in the first movie, it's Shaddam DeFort's cunning that's the real threat. Walken's going to bring his A-game to this role. He's proven time and again that he can steal the show even with just a scene or two. Think of his electrifying performances in Batman Returns or Sleepy Hollow. He's got an act for playing bad guys who leave a lasting impression, and Emperor Shaddam IV is all set to be another better in his cap. Returning cast, Timothy Chalamet as Duke Paul Atreides. Timothy Chalamet returns as Paul Atreides, now deep in the sandy trenches of Arrakis, joining forces with Zendaya, Shaney, and the mysterious Fremen to strike back at the Harkonnens. After their ruthless attack, it's payback time, and Paul's got more than just revenge on his plate. There's a budding romance with Shaney, and then there's this small matter of the universe's fate hanging in the balance. The sequel's trailer starts with Chalamet setting the scene for what's to come like the first scene of a Shakespearean play. He paints a picture of a brutal world where his family has been battling the Harkonnens for ages. Things get real when Paul, after a frosty reception, rallies with Cheney and the Fremen showing off some high-tech firepower against the Harkonnen forces. Paul's moment of truth comes when he conquers a giant sandworm, earning the Fremen's trust and sparking rumors that he might be the Quisit's Heterak, a legendary figure with the power to change the course of history. The climax teases an intense showdown between Paul and Fade Ravda Harkonnen, played by Austin Butler, the nephew and heir to Stellan Skarsgård's Baron Harkonnen. All in all, Chalamet's character is set to break barriers that the geopolitical setup has set for him. It's beyond an ounce of doubt that he will emerge as a leader of the people and a beacon of freedom and hope for the Fremen, for his house and for the Dune universe in general. Zendaya as Cheney Dune Part 2 is set to turn the tables on Zendaya's character Cheney, as the change is a welcome one. The fans who felt let down by her brief appearance in the first movie are in for a treat. In fact, she has promised in interviews that she would be playing a much larger role in the movie. The sequel, dropping in November 2023, picks up right where the first film let off, with Timothy Chalamet's 
Paul Atreides joining forces with the Fremen of Iraqis for the looming war against Emperor Shaddam IV and the Harkonnens, and this time Zendaya's Cheney isn't just a vision in Paul's dreams, she's front and center. In Dune, Zendaya's screen time was surprisingly short, especially given her star power. She was on screen for just 7 minutes in a two and a half hour epic, mostly in Paul's visions. The latest trailer is a dead giveaway, Cheney's all over it, gearing up for battle and sparking some romance with Paul. This shift is a big deal. Not only does it mean Zendaya gets to flex her action and acting chops, but it also puts her character at the heart of the story. The trailer teases plenty of action-packed scenes with Chaney. I mean, Chaney's not just a female lead who is there because every hero needs a heroine. She's a fighter with a cause, and Zendaya is set to bring that passion and strength to the big screen, making up for the first movie's oversight and giving Chaney the spotlight she deserves. Josh Brolin as Gurney Halleck Dune Part 2 brings some intriguing details from Frank Herbert's novel to life, especially Josh Brolin's character, Gurney Halleck. Director Danny Villeneuve has something special up his sleeve for Gurney this time around. Remember how we all thought Gurney was a goner in the first movie? Well, the latest trailer has flipped the script, revealing that he's very much alive. And his longer hair is a subtle hint that quite a bit of time has passed since we last saw him. The sequel's going to dive into Paul Atreides teaming up with Chaney and the Fremen for some serious revenge. Josh Brolin's Gurney Halleck will finally get to show off his musical chops. In the Dune universe, Gurney's not just a fierce warrior, he is also a maestro of the bassoid, a nine-stringed instrument. The first film teased us by cutting out a scene where Brolin plays it. But Danny Villeneuve in a chat with Empire has let slip that Dune Part 2 will make up for it. He's been fixated on getting this detail right, and it sounds like Brolin's musical performance as Gurney will be something to remember. Gurney Halleck is something of a cornerstone in the Dune saga. He stands as a steadfast ally to House Atreides and a mentor to Paul, helping him shape into the fighter he becomes. It's great to hear that Dune Part 2 will give him more time in the limelight, especially with this unique musical angle. Dave Batista's Count Glossu Raban. Dave Batista once again brings to life the menacing Count Glossu Raban, an important villain in the epic tale. Known as the Beast, Raban is the heavy hitting nephew of Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. This guy is the definition of a brute, notorious for his unpredictable, explosive rage. Cross him and it's probably the last thing you'll do. Raban's not happy about House Harkonnen losing control of Arrakis, but his uncle, the cunning Baron, spins it as a chance to crush their arch-rival's House Atreides. Raban, always eager to flex his muscles, will play a major role in the second movie, but of course, he will not have a very nice fate. After the dust settles and House Atreides is seemingly wiped out, Raban gets the gig of managing the spice operations on Arrakis. He's all about cranking up production and cashing in on the reserves. Physically, Raban's spitting image of his uncle Vladimir. He sports a shaved head and a face that spelled trouble for anyone who crosses his path. His appearance is a mix of power and fear, a true reflection of his persona. As for his personality, the word ruthless doesn't even start to cover it. Raban is the kind of soldier in the Harkonnen ranks who doesn't know the meaning of mercy. His anger towards the Atreides, coupled with his general disdain for human life, makes him one dangerous dude you wouldn't want to mess with. Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Vladimir Harkonnen Stellan Skarsgård plays the vicious and deadly Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, the big bad bald menace who's got it out for House Atreides. This guy is pure evil, a monstrous figure who floats around like a dark cloud embodying greed and tyranny. He's the head honcho of House Harkonnen, running his show in fear and a ruthless drive to milk Arrakis for all it's worth, no matter the cost to its inhabitants. Baron Harkonnen's backstory is a bit of a mystery, but one thing's clear, his reign on Arrakis made him no friends among the Fremen, thanks to his brutal spice harvesting methods. When the Emperor decides to boot House Harkonnen off Arrakis, Vladimir coolly packs up, but behind the scenes he's cut a deal with the Emperor to knock House Atreides off their new perch on Arrakis with a little help from the Emperor's elite troops, the Sardaukar. After House Atreides lands on Arrakis and starts getting cozy in Arrakeen, Vladimir wastes no time. He launches a brutal attack helped by the betrayal of Wellington Yui. The siege is a bloodbath, with loads of Atreides soldiers biting the dust and Arrakeen getting wrecked. When Leto Atreides is captured and brought before him, Vladimir offs him but he gets a nasty surprise when Leto releases a poisonous gas. The Baron survives the attack, but it leaves him in bad shape. Back home and licking his wounds, Vladimir gets word from his nephew, Rabin, that Jessica and Paul Atreides are supposedly dead. He orders the spice harvesting on Arrakis to start again and to start selling off their spice stash. But not too quickly, he doesn't want to tag the market. 
Javier Bardem as Stilgar. In the 2021 movie Dune, Javier Bardem steps into the shoes of Stilgar, the head honcho of a Fremen tribe on the harsh desert planet of Arrakis. Of course, this guy is the leader, but he's also a pro-survivalist through and through, totally in tune with the brutal environments of Dune. His wisdom and understanding of the planet makes him a respected figure among the Fremen, who are basically the ultimate desert warriors. Stilgar first makes his entrance when he meets Duke Leto and the rest of House Atreides, thanks to Duncan Idaho's intro. Later, when Paul and Jessica make a narrow escape from the Sardaukar troops and crash land in the desert, it's Stilgar and his Fremen crew who stumble upon them. Initially, Stilgar's not too keen on keeping them alive, but he quickly changes his tune when Jessica proves she's no pushover. He decides to grant them sanctuary, at least until they reach the Fremen base. Things get spicy when one of the Fremen, Jamis, isn't too happy about these newcomers. He challenges Jessica, but it's Paul who ends up facing him in a duel. After Paul defeats Jamis, Stilgar accepts Paul into the tribe sticking to the Fremen strict life for life code. So yeah, Stilgar is a pretty important character in Dune and Mr. Bardem turns his character into someone who is gritty and wise. Stephen McKinley Henderson as Thufir Howitt. In the 2021 Dune film, Stephen McKinley Henderson portrays Thufir Howitt, the brainiac mentat and master of assassins for Duke Leto of House Atreides. He is the ultimate strategist with a brain like a supercomputer. This guy's got skills in psychological warfare and runs the security for House Atreides like a boss. As a mentat, Thufir's mental prowess is off the charts. He's like a human chess master always several moves ahead and he's mapping out every possible outcome. You could say he's Dune's version of Doctor Strange. His main gig is to keep Paul Atreides safe from all kinds of dangers, the ones you see coming and the ones you don't. In a universe where betrayal and intrigue are the norm, having two fear on your side is a major win. Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica in Dune Part 2, Lady Jessica's journey, played by Rebecca Ferguson, takes a wild turn, especially with a spice agony ceremony. This ritual is a big deal in Frank Herbert's Dune universe, so here's what it really means. Arrakis, the desert planet in Dune, is the only spot in the universe where you can find melange or spice. This stuff is the king of drugs and does things you would not believe. It prolongs life, boosts vitality, and cranks up awareness to insurmountable levels. Way more than the Unagi that Ross Geller keeps talking about. Lady Jessica, part of the Bene Gesserit squad, was supposed to have a daughter for the Bene Gesserit's grand plan, but she went rogue and had Paul instead, who's now looking like the prophesied Kwisatz Heterach. The spice is a big deal for them, especially for Bene Gesserit folks like Jessica, because it can unlock insane powers. Now about this spice agony thing, it's the ultimate test for Bene Gesserit members. We got a taste of their intense training in the first movie. Remember the Gom Jabbar test with Paul? Well, spice agony is next level. It involves overdosing on melange and then, if you're tough enough, transforming the lethal stuff into something harmless inside your body. Survive this and you're not just a regular sister anymore. You're a reverend mother with access to all this genetic memory, basically a living library of your ancestors' know-how. In Dune Part 2, Jessica decides to bite the bullet and go for the spice agony. Why? Well, after escaping the Harkonnen attack with Paul and winding up with the Fremen, she's not just Paul's mom anymore. She's a big deal to these folks. Undergoing the spice agony and becoming a reverend mother is a power move essential for Paul's success, but it's not without its downsides. Speaking of which, let's talk about Elia Atreides, who is set to be a major player in Dune 2. Aaliyah Atreides. Dune Part 2 is rubbing up to dive deeper into the Fremen world and tackle the aftermath of Duke Leto Atreides' demise. And guess what? We're set to meet another intriguing member of the Atreides clan, Aaliyah Atreides. She's Paul Atreides' little sister, and it is probably more important than the other big guns. She's only two years old during the events of Dune Part 2, but she's essentially a super bait. After Duke Leto dies at the hands of the Harkonnens, Lady Jessica discovers she's expecting, and Aaliyah is born among the Fremen. That there's been barely a peep about Aaliyah in the movie's marketing. She's like this secret weapon the filmmakers are keeping under wraps, even though she appeared in one of Paul's visions in the first film. Now, Aaliyah is no ordinary tot. She is pretty out there, even for the Dune universe. Before Aaliyah is born, Lady Jessica does this intense ritual with sandworm liquid, the water of life, which turns her into a reverend mother. When Jessica takes on the water of life, she's pregnant with Paul's little sister Aaliyah. This ceremony gives Aaliyah some serious mental powers, but it's also why she's called an abomination. She's a kid with an adult's mind. Being an abomination isn't all bad, though. Aaliyah's got the wisdom of her ancestors crammed into her toddler brain. This makes her super powerful and a key figure in the Dune Saga. 
She's got big plans like setting up her own government, and her story in Dune Part 2 is set to be a wild ride, leading to some seriously dark moments in the story. So yeah, Aaliyah Atreides is one character to keep an eye on in the upcoming flick. Marvelous Verdict Dune Part 2 is shaping up to be a riveting follow-up. It would blend new and returning characters into the complex history of Arrakis. Overall, Dune Part 2 promises to be an expansive and intricate continuation with political intrigue, personal struggles, and mystical elements all set in the unforgiving desert world of Arrakis. The film is an evolution of the Dune universe and promises a layered and immersive cinematic experience. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. I do see a way. There is a narrow way through.